Suppose then, for an example, that this reflection is known to be associated with a good porous reservoir, and that this interval above is known to be a good sealing shale. Then we have a potential fault trap. On this line, we have clear closure against the fault. But as always, we have to remember that one good section does not make a prospect. Before we start getting excited, let's check the other lines. On the next parallel line to the south, hmm, well, dip reversal, but certainly no fault down to the east. On the next parallel line to the north, however, there it is again, clear as a bell, and still with good potential as a trap. The antithetic fault, not quite so well developed here. All right, the next parallel line to the north. Aha, much less pronounced faulting at target level now, more like a flex. So, on the next line further north, we'd expect little or nothing at target level. Well, what do you think? <laughs> I think we'd better map it. So do I. First, as before, we transfer the major features to the map. In this case, the big fault. On line three, it is at shot point 465. So, we go to line three on the map. And there, draw the symbol for a fault down to the east. We don't know at this stage that the fault is perpendicular to the line. We'll find out later which way it goes. Then, on line four, again, the big fault, very clear, at shot point 1715. Again to the map. And mark the fault down to the east. And from line five, the smaller fault down to the east. So the fault is, more or less, north-south, curved but generally perpendicular to the lines. Whoa, hold it. If and only if we know it is the same fault on all three lines. If not, it could be this. But if it were that, we would expect to see faults on that north-south tie line, cutting it there and there and there. Well, the north-south line is that. And do you see any suitable faults on that? No, I don't. So I was right all along. The fault goes more or less north-south. Yes, you were, this time. But you always have to check, and it's usually not as clear as in this simple case. All right, now let's map that yellow reflection. Looks to me as if the contour interval should be 20 milliseconds, and as if we can time on that interval. Let's start with the contour at 3.56 seconds, then 3.54 seconds, 3.52, and so on. Mostly just regional dip. Ah, turnover. All right, so down there we'll have to go carefully. Before we tackle the tricky parts, let's just go on putting in the easy contours. Now that last one, 3.20 seconds, we can also find over here. So now we can take that contour up to the fault on both sides. Now we can add a few more simple ones mostly regional dip again, giving us the general direction of the contours. Then, with some care, we project the remaining contours up to the fault. Each contour which enters the fault must also leave it. Somewhere in here, we must add that antithetic fault down to the west, and probably a second minor one. Then, on we go, honoring these faults and the contouring in the same way. and the low, which never quite faulted. Now we can go to the north, entering the fault, leaving the fault, entering the fault, leaving the fault, then the little high, unfaulted, and the final picture. After we're sure we have it right, at a fairly detailed contour interval, we can simplify the map by omitting alternate contours. And the message? a north-south anticlinal nose faulted down on its east flank. 